I was pushing out from the inside of the trailer and pushing in from the outside of the trailer. It was kind of chaotic for a little bit there, but it did end up working. It just wasn't very pretty. Hey, welcome back. So I've gotten to a point in the build where I've completed all the tasks that I knew had to be completed earlier on. Things like removing the wall panels, installing the ceiling fan, ladder rack, and solar. But I still have a hundred other projects that I have to get done and sometimes I struggle to figure out which one's next. So I found making a list really helps. Once I sit down and write it out, it becomes much more clear what needs to happen next. I'm trying to learn from my previous builds. I know what I've done wrong in the past. So I know that there's a couple of things that if I do them in the wrong order, I make so much more work for myself. So I'm really trying to avoid that this time around. But anyway, here's the list. And just know it's not set in stone, but this is a little preview of what's to come. And you can see at the top, escape window, that's today's episode. I do have to mention right off the bat, there's a couple of issues with this episode. I'm sad to report that I actually lost a lot of the install video. I must have accidentally deleted it. I'm not happy, but I'm gonna do my best to fill in the blanks. Uh, second is the install actually didn't go great. The window is installed. It's looking good, it's not leaking. Um, everything's actually fine. I made the job a lot harder than it had to be. And I will go over that at the end of the video. But anyway, I've been talking way too much. Let's get into it. All right, so today we're gonna to be working on installing the large escape window that's gonna be in the back dining area. So let's unbox it here. So, I got this off of recpro.com, definitely not sponsored. This is an escape window, meaning, you know what, I think it'll be easier to just show you. So, okay, so this is the inner trim piece that it comes with. I think this is optional, but if it's a new install, you're pretty much gonna need it. This is what's gonna allow you to uh, sandwich that sheet metal. So yeah, I think this looks pretty nice. This is the outside of it here. I would have loved to go with a uh, frameless design like a lot of the newer RVs. I was having a hard time finding anything like that, or maybe it was out of my budget. This is pretty fairly priced, so I can't remember the exact price and dimensions, but through the magic of editing. But it's, it's a nice window. It's tinted. Uh, this is an aluminum frame, and it has a screen inside. So let me show you how it works. Turn it around. So anytime you have an escape window, it's kind of an emergency exit window. I think they're required to make it obvious. Um, and they do that by putting exit stickers. Red is used to help show you where the access points are. This is to remove the screen. This is the handle. So you just lift it out of its bracket. And then you'll just push this out. And then it actually has a catch right there. So it'll hold it there. It's not like the most sturdy feeling catch. I would like to see this lift be a little bit bigger, but as long as you're not moving, I'm sure it's fine. If you got rambunctious kids or something, I could see this getting bumped. But I'm curious to see, this red has to be indicating that I can take the screen off. It looks like it's already partially off, so let me get it the rest of the way. So yeah, it's just got metal tabs, so really you can pull from anywhere that you can get your finger. Yeah, yeah, that is pretty nice. Again, that part seems a little flimsy. I don't see that holding up over the years. But you could easily put some sort of a handle on there if you were wanting to make that easier. 
There's a gasket, just a foam gasket all the way around there. I'm sure it's easily replaced if you need to. I can feel a little bit of resistance before I get before I get it secured, so I feel like that's making a good seal. I think that's going to be great. If it's raining a little bit, you can have the window open. That's actually one of the main reasons why I wanted this uh, window. But if you need to get out, you can push that all the way through. This can hinge pretty far to get out. Okay. If there's any weak points in this design, the frame, the glass, the hinge, seems good. The only parts that I see failing are the plastic components. I would like to see them out of metal. For the price point again, this isn't bad. I would definitely, definitely recommend this window so far. So just so you know, this does say statewide windows. It has a DOT number, must be DOT rated. Techniglass, made in USA. Wasn't expecting that. <clears throat> Sadly, what's made in the U.S. anymore? They do include a little replacement installation instructions. Um, it just says you need a drill, a Phillips putty knife, measuring tape, and it kind of goes through and explains how to do it. So let's head out, take a look at the trailer. All right, so we already have a problem Looking at these instructions, it tells you because the window comes with the D-bulb seal already attached, you don't have to worry about using any other kind of sealant, blah, blah, blah. This is the part of the window that would be against the outside of the trailer. No seal. Um, I looked in the box. It's not in there. It should already be attached. Previously purchased a small window for the man door. It's supposed to already be attached like it is on this one. So reached out to the company um, we'll see what they say so it didn't take long for them to respond and they gave me two options the first being a new seal they could send in the mail i probably wouldn't get it for a couple of days or two they would give me a 35 dollars discount and i could use that money to buy a new seal or sealant so that's what i decided the second option i like the idea of 3m fast cure sealant anyway but more on that in a bit we are back in business all right so at this rear portion of the trailer this is where we are going to the window i just have to kind of figure out i have it written down somewhere where i thought the height would be best so i haven't mentioned before but i always model everything in google sketchup ahead of time this is a powerful 3d modeling software i've always used the free version everything you're seeing here is from the free version but it's great you can see my trailer i've modeled once you get all your dimensions and start building the model you can really see what works what doesn't work it really just cuts down on the guesswork even if you're standing in the space and you're trying to design a layout in the floor plan, you can only measure one or two things at a time. So to be able to model the whole space just to ensure that everything's gonna fit, super helpful. So at the back of my trailer, you can see in my model here, I've got a bench. That's actually the electrical cabinet. We can move that out of the way. Now I can measure from the floor up to the window and see where I wanted my window. So now I can pull out my tape measure, three feet, five inches, perfect. Now I can do it in real life, in theory. So sadly, this is the last bit of video that I have from the window install, and obviously this isn't even the install yet. But now that I have my measurements from the SketchUp model, I can go in my trailer and measure and mark it on the wall. I believe I then drilled some holes from the inside. Then from the outside, I could see the two holes that represented the bottom corners of the window. I then taped off the area and using the window and the trim ring, I was able to trace the window opening onto the tape. Then I used my jigsaw to cut from one of the holes all the way along my traced line. It's much easier to cut from the outside in this circumstance because otherwise you'd have to climb over a stud twice with the jigsaw, which is not the easiest thing to do. And then I ended up with a giant hole in the side of my trailer. And uh, at that point you can set the window in there, but this is where things got a little tricky for me. So let's go out to the trailer now. I'll show you the installed window and I'll tell you what happened. to come uh, with all the wiring here but but we are here to talk about the window right so you can see the windows installed everything looks great 
but I'll be honest, I really struggled. Let me explain why. The reason I struggled so much is because I installed the window without using the trim ring. So how a trim ring works is the trim ring goes on the inside, the window's on the outside. You got all these screws along here. You screw them together and it sandwiches the sheet metal and the interior wall panels. Uh, basically secures everything in place. They'll require a specific wall thickness, so you gotta keep that in mind if you're ordering a window for your camper. Trailers often have a thinner wall, so I will be adding plywood to my studs to make my walls a little bit thicker. If I didn't do that, I wouldn't be able to use this trim ring because this window is about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters deep, and my studs are only about an inch deep, so the trim ring wouldn't work. But that's something for another episode anyway. I didn't think I could use the trim ring because I don't have wall panels up, obviously. And I thought I needed the wall panels off because when I cut this hole, I'm left with a very wobbly wall with very little support. So I thought I was going to have to do bracing all over the place. And I didn't think I would have enough access to do that with the wall panels up. So it was a sort of catch-22, but I found a workaround, so I thought. I decided to glue the windows in place with the 3M Fast Cure sealant, the same stuff I use on the ceiling fan and various other things. That way I wouldn't need the trim ring to secure the window, essentially the window would be glued to the side of the trailer. Additionally, I thought it would offer a better long-term seal when compared to a foam gasket. Plus it would actually bond the window to the trailer sheet metal, making it a more stable wall. But after the sealant was cured, I discovered that the wall was super rigid. It's like I never did anything. I mean, obviously these walls, they give no matter what. The flex that you're seeing is actually in the whole stud on both sides. So it definitely is strong. I don't think I have to do any additional bracing. So you're probably wondering at this point, what was the big problem then? Well, once I applied the sealant to the window and placed the window on the outside of the trailer, I had to come up with a way to hold it there. So obviously I have to put some sort of pressure on the outside. That was tricky enough. But as soon as I did that, I noticed that the middle part of this sheet metal on the top and bottom, it was just too loose. So I, I realized pretty quick that I needed to brace the wall from the inside, actually push it out. So once I braced the wall from the inside, I actually took two of my ladders and leaned them up against the window. Uh, one ladder kind of high, one ladder kind of low. My ladders have kind of a rubbery feet on them, so I wasn't damaging. I think I even put a blanket over as well, so I wouldn't scratch the glass. But essentially, I was pushing out from the inside of the trailer and pushing in from the outside of the trailer. It was kind of chaotic for a little bit there, but it did end up working. It just wasn't very pretty. It's crazy because I've done a couple van builds and I actually never installed any windows. So this was totally new territory for me. I definitely got a little bit of a crash course on this one. Uh, so anyway, knowing what I know now, what would I do differently? I do think you could have the wall panels up. I probably would spend a little bit more time making a better template. I tried using the window, I think I tried using the trim ring, but it wasn't great. Use cardboard or something and make a better template. I would tape off where you're gonna be cutting so that your jigsaw doesn't scratch the paint. And I would cut out the sheet metal, cut out a hole in the wall paneling as well. Then I would remove the tape on the outside because if you leave the tape, you're not actually gluing to the trailer, you're gluing on the tape. Any sealant that squishes out, you can actually just let it dry and you can, it doesn't even have to be a very sharp knife, but afterwards you'll be able to just cut that along the window frame and you can just remove it pretty easy. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. I would cut the holes and before I place the window, I would take some wood. It needs to be the right thickness so that when your wall panels are up, it's nice and snug in there. So you're gonna have a piece going across there, there, another piece across there, another piece there. Before you put the window in, you should easily be able to slide them in there. I would glue them to the sheet metal. I wouldn't worry about securing them to the wall panel. You can, but I don't think you really have to, as long as it's secured to either the sheet metal or the wall panel. Once this is all sandwiched together, I think you're fine. Once you attach this to the outside of the wall panel, the window is pressed up against the sheet metal from the outside. Once these are all secured together, 
it's going to force everything to be nice and flat and flush all the way around. The studs on the sides are enough support there, so really we're just concerned with these four spots right there. So cut out your holes, take off your tape, add your spacer pieces, add the sealant to the window, set it in the hole, come in here, put your trim ring up. This has several holes all the way around. It kind of goes into this track all the way around this window. Tighten down all the screws. You're not gonna have any gaps anywhere around that window. It's gonna squish out that sealant. Um, I think you could do this same thing with the foam gasket that they include. I can't speak to the rigidity of that. I'm thinking even with the foam, you can get away without doing anything other than uh, the spacer pieces. And if you think about it, if you glue those spacers in there, it might not seem like it's doing much, but it, it really doesn't need much. Aluminum has so much flex to it to begin with. Really all the strength is coming from that wall panel and the actual glass window, the metal frame itself. So do it at your own risk, but I can definitely attest to the sealant method this is already plenty strong, and I know once I put the wall panel up, I am still gonna do the trim ring. That's gonna make it that much more solid. So anyway, this isn't exactly the video that I wanted. Not as, I guess it's still informative, but it's kind of in a different way. It was a new project for me, like I said, and I learned a lot. I made some mistakes, but that's how these projects go. I'm lucky it still turned out great, it's still sealed up everything's working um, it's just one of those projects where sadly I didn't know the best course of action until I made a few mistakes but it worked out in the end I just made the job a lot harder than it had to be as usual so once again please do me a favor and learn from my mistakes Stay tuned for the next episode where I actually get into a lot of the trailer wiring, um, the factory wiring, and I do my best to fix a lot of things. Whoa! Whoa! But yeah, I'm going to fix a lot of the trailer wiring inside. The main junction box underneath, that was a mess. I fixed that as well. And then beyond that, probably future episodes, but I'm going to start getting into actually all this wiring craziness. and. And then I might also get into wrapping up some of the exterior projects. I've discovered more stuff I have to fix on this Discovery trailer. There's gaps in the wall. There's certain places that aren't sealed up. I'm also going to be installing a Max Air bathroom fan. I'm going to move one of the factory vents to a, a different location that better suits my needs. I'm going to add some porch lights or motion lights. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more to come. And I've also finally figured out how I'm gonna do the roof deck. So that's gonna be a few episodes later on, but we're getting there. But thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.